All right, so I just thought I would quickly showcase exactly how you go about creating uh, a Gantt chart um, or a project schedule, specifically Gantt chart using Project Libre, right? Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to projectlibre.com, um, click on the download button, right, right on the home page, and then you'll be taken to uh, SourceForge. Um, by default, uh, you'll be presented with a screen. Just click on Files, right, um, and then click uh on project libre right and then choose the most recent release which is 1.9.1 as of may 1st 2020 right um, once you click in there select or download um, an executable file an installation file specific to your operating system so that will be a .exe file if you're working on windows a .dmg file if you're working on a mac right uh db for any Debian um, operating system, so Ubuntu or Debian itself. RPM, if you're working on some obscure Linux operating system like Red Hat, for instance, right? All right, so once you download that file, um, you notice that you, f when you fire Project Libre, you'll be presented with a screen similar to what you're seeing here, right? Close the tooltip. Um, by default, this pop-up window comes up, which has uh, two options. So you can either choose to create a project or open an existing project. If you're doing this for the first time, you click the create project button, right? So once I click on the create project button, um, you notice that the form that comes up has um, a couple of options that enable me to specify uh, project name. So I'll call this example 3010 project. Uh, the manager, so the person who is going to be managing the project, uh, in this case, it would be yours truly, right? this hypothetical project and then the start date right um, and then a few notes here associated with the project I'll just say this is just an example yeah right I say okay um, and voila this is what you're presented with so the left panel um, would be a visual representation of the different tasks associated with your project so you notice things like the ID task ID the task name the duration, the start date, and if you actually uh, kind of like expand this or drag it to your right, you notice that there are a couple of other additional things associated with your task. So things like the finish date, right? Each task is associated with these key time elements. So each task should have a start date and a finish date. Using these two things, you can derive the duration, or it should have a start date and a duration. Using these two, you can derive the finish date, right? A task can optionally have predecessors or dependencies, right? Um, for now, you can just ignore the resource names. This would be um, things like individuals that would be assigned to these specific tasks. Um, at a later stage, I guess maybe you might want to include these details, but for now, if what you're interested in is just uh, coming up with a Gantt chart, then you can, you can actually hide this column, right? Like I have. All right, this right panel here is essentially just a visual representation of the timeline associated with the entire project. If you notice, the top strip here has the months, um, and then right below here is the days within that month week. So this is the week of April 20th, week of May 4th, week of May 11th, and if you check your calendar, week of April 20th, week of May 4th is um, a week that starts on a Monday, right? So week of May 4th, May 11th, May 18th, so this is a for, for my particular um, instance of Project Libre here, these are by default segmented into weeks, and then weeks are further broken down into days. But if you remember our discussion, we said that you're better off having the lowest time as being a week, right? If you want to visualize your project that way, especially if it's a multi-year project, uh, a project that spans, or maybe a project that spans multiple months, what you want to do is you go on tasks, and then you zoom out, right? As you're zooming out, you notice that um, the top strip changes from weeks to months, right? Um, and then what you have right below here, the, the weeks within that month, right? Um, you can further zoom in and have uh, this sort of visual representation where you have uh, quarters, right? So first quarter of the year, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, right? Four quarters, and then the months that fall within those quarters. This is usually a nice way of visualizing the project. And then always get into the habit of saving as you're making these changes. Um, when there's uh, um, saving required, you notice an asterisk uh, right after the project name. So in my case here, if you can see my mouse, 
that asterisk asterisk is what i'm referring to just control s to save or just go under file and just say save you want to constantly save this and if you're saving this by default for the first time you notice that uh, it's going to prompt me to save this on my on my hard drive or my hard disk or just say save it in my home directory okay once that happens now um the task is to use input from your work breakdown structure right so the tasks with their corresponding durations and start dates and dependencies will be used as input to create your schedule yeah um, in this example we're going to be working with um, with with this this list of tasks that we've, we've been using as an example right most of our discussions um, and what I'm going to do here is just quickly navigate to a part of um, I guess navigate to my Google Drive to get to the point where I hope I have it somewhere Oh, wait a minute, it's here. Okay, so what I did was I, I just um, came up with hypothetical start dates for these tasks here, right, for this project itself. Um, and the assumption I'm making here is that this project begins today, which is May 1st. Okay, um, <clears throat> and you notice I've stripped out this uh, the effort required because the only input we want is the task ID, the duration, and the dependencies. Yeah? Uh, so I came up with these uh, hypothetical start dates, and you notice the start date is the same for all tasks that don't have dependencies. If it doesn't have a dependency, you can start it on the very first day of the project. Um, and then I start deriving these other start dates and end dates. <coughs> uh, so for tasks that have dependencies, <coughs> the start date is obviously going to be the date after or equal to the end date for the task with which that particular task is dependent on. So if you look at T3, for instance, I'm saying the start date for T3 is going to be May 11th because T3 is dependent on T1, yeah? And the end date for T1 is May 11th. So I just pull, uh, I pull May 11th to be the start date for T3. If you get to a stage uh, or a situation where, for this particular example, where you have a task uh, being dependent on more than, more than one task, <clears throat> what you do is you just get the maximum date of the two end, end dates for the uh, tasks. Um, which that particular task depends on. I'm being recursive here, but I, I hope you're following through. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying here is if you look at T2 here and T4, end date for T2 is May 16th, end date for T4 is May 11th. The largest date is May 6th. So what do I do? I pull May, May, sorry, May 16th, I pull May 16th here. Okay, <clears throat> so finally, this is what I have. This is my input. Um, and the way that I normally do this myself, I mean, there's obviously different ways of doing this, but the way I do it is I first of all key in all the different tasks and then I start adjusting the dates, right? So I'll start by keying in the first task, which is T1. So I have tasks uh, from T1 all the way up to T12. So it's T1, T2, T3, T4, uh, T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10, T11, T12, right? Um, but besides that, um, you notice that uh, for this particular example we're using, we also have milestones, right? Um, for now, we just assume that uh, if a milestone is right next to a task like T1 here, then the, the date associated with that milestone is the end date for T1. So in this case, we have milestones, uh, I'll just say, if I can find the insert key here. I wonder if there is. I thought there would be one insert button. Okay, it doesn't appear like there is uh, an insert button. I'll just say milestone one here. I thought there was an insert button. There should be an insert button. This is weird. Uh, I know it's not, okay, great. So new, right? Uh, so. I'll click in this row, T1, and then just say new. Okay, not like that. Right below, say new. And then I'll say M1 here. Great. Um, for T12, that's uh, no milestone. So I'll just delete that. Doesn't have to be there. I'll just delete it by right clicking in the row and just say delete. Okay. Um, the other milestone we have is milestone, milestone three here, right? Uh, and it's right under, it's associated with T2 and T4. So I'll just get the maximum between T2 and T4. 
uh, which is D24, which is May 16th. So I'll just indent it right below T4. Yeah, so this will be your mouse, mouse on three. Uh, mouse on four, T1 and T2. So just dump it right below T2. Okay, mouse on one. Mouse on two, right below T4. And again, you wouldn't really have to go through all these things with your respective projects because you'd have already um, identified uh, or you probably have visually represented your milestones um, as part of the list of tasks here within your break breakdown structure, right? Presented in tabular form. Um, but unfortunately, this example is somewhat different. You're just pulling this from, from our recommended textbook. And then milestone M5 is right below T6. M5 and then M6 is right below T8 again for you to is to indicate a task in between two existing tasks what you do is you right click um, within the row and you just say new <coughs> right and then milestone 7 is right below 9 And then finally, milestone eight is right below 11. All right. Okay, so now that um, I've, I've actually entered all, all the tasks associated, tasks and milestones associated with this hypothetical project we're working with, um, the next thing to do is to start specifying the dates associated with the projects, right? Um, but before we do that, maybe something you might want to do is uh, perhaps uh, this might be important to you, or it might not be important, it's always nice to do this, is probably indicate um, the high-level project name, right? So in this case, we said our project name was going to be uh, example ICT 3010 project, right? This is what you do. And after you do that, what you want to do is highlight all the different tasks and milestones and then just say indent so that these are... Um, represented as an umbrella, you re visually represent this hierarchy really, right? Um, all right, I'll hide this just because it's not important for now. You just use these incremental row numbers as task IDs. <clears throat> okay, um, now that we've done that, um, we can proceed with uh, indicating the start dates and end dates, so the start dates and the durations, right? Something else you might want to do though, if you notice uh, what I just did by indenting these uh, different task under the umbrella is you might decide to represent <clears throat> or your project rather might might just end up um, having what we introduced as summary tasks right so if you have phases associated with these different tasks so key activities associated with these different tasks what you want to do is you want to visually represent that as well right so if, for instance, you had a task one, two, and three being associated with, uh, uh, okay, just say undo. If we also had, let's say, if, uh, activity here as a column name, again, your work, break, work breakdown structure will not have to be presented the way it's being presented here, but I'm just doing this uh, for the purposes of this example because this example doesn't have phases or activities but assuming this was let's say phase one right task one two and three all, all the way up to four would be phase one and everything else is phase two um, what you might perhaps want to do is to visually represent that in your gun chart right so these would be your summary tasks i'll show you what i mean just now so I'll just copy paste this. And what we're saying is that task T1 all the way up to T4, four under phase one, yeah? All the other tasks uh, four under phase two. So how do we visually represent this? Well, all you have to do is just create the phase as 
as an item oops sorry about that as an item right above and if i can just create this sorry about that I'll just create indent new indentation there we go so I just say phase one here and then right above t5 i'll have phase two so i'll go to t5 and just say insert and then i'll say phase two now if we're saying phase one and phase two are summary tasks associated with our project then what we need to do is just highlight all the rows below phase one and just say indent so that they're visually represented as summary tasks and you notice as i'm making these changes right this um this icon comes up here and notice as, as we adjust the dates really um, this will envelope all the tasks that are associated with it. So T1 all the way up to T4. Right. All right. So you do the same thing for T5 all the way up to T12. And then you just right click and just say indent. Right. Notice that this black icon comes up here. Okay. Now that we're done with that, what we do is we start specifying the start dates and end dates. So start dates and the duration. So this is as easy as just. Uh, uh, just do that and then we'll say we'll start with uh, T1 we're saying T1 starts on May 1st uh, which is today so because I'm creating this today this thing already automatically assigns May 1st as the start date for by default for all the activities or tasks associated with this hypothetical project all right uh, so for task one we're saying May 1st Finish date is, we derive this, is May 11th. Um, so specifying the end date is as easy as just clicking this drop down button and then this calendar widget com comes up. You just say May 11th. Uh, press enter and already notice my timeline is being adjusted for me. I'll go to T2. Uh, this is May 1st up to May 16th, right? So I go to T2, uh, May 16th. Just click that, press enter, and then boom, comes up as well. Again, observe, as I'm making these changes, the, the tool itself, and don't forget to press Control S or save, and, and just, or click the save button here, very important, right? As I'm making these changes, the, the tool is automatically identifying what it um, computes as being the critical path. So this would be the bar or the task that fall within this red arrow, right? So you notice that as I'm making these changes, the tasks that fall within the critical path are going to are going to change, or the path is going to change. Right. Um, T2, and then we we'll go to T3, which is May 11th up to May 16th. So I'll go to T3, which is here. It's May 11th is the start date. Right. Press Enter, and we go up to May 26th. Right. So we come in here. We say May 26th, which is a Tuesday, evidently. Um, again, you notice that as I'm making the changes, the summary task duration is automatically being adjusted, right? So these black, um, these, these black lines here that are enveloping these other tasks. So both the project summary, ta the main project uh, task, right, which I defined, is changing, including the specific uh, summary tasks. Right, because of the indentations that we did there. And then we go to T4, May 1st, all the way up to May 11th. Yeah, May 1st up to May 11th. Press Enter. We go to uh, T5, which is here. It's uh, May 16th up to 26th. <clears throat> up to 26th T6 is 16th to 21st twenty first. Uh, again don't forget control S uh, T7 is 11th to 31st
again, you notice that the critical path has suddenly changed, right? Um, great. So T, T9, oh, sorry, T8 is 11th to 5th June, right? T8, 11th to 5th June. Don't forget to save, control S. T9 is 26th to 10th June. Yeah, you notice there's nothing to it really. It's just point and point and click really, which is, um, I know it's boring, but this has to be done sadly. June 5th to, it's a means to an end, I guess, to June 20th. Don't forget to save. Uh, what was 10? 11 is 10th to 20th. And then finally 12 is, uh, hmm, there we go. 12 is uh, 20th to 30th. on finally okay great so we've done that right <clears throat> um, wait okay so we've done that uh, the next step here is to uh, define the define the uh, <clears throat> the dependencies that exist, right? So we are saying uh, T1, and we'll fix the milestones later. Maybe we should fix the milestones before we, maybe we should fix the milestones before we create the All right, so <clears throat> setting up, um, setting up a, a milestone or defining a milestone is pretty trivial in Project Libri. Um, if you remember our definition of a milestone, we said it's a, it's, it's a key, it's a key event, essentially, right? Um, associated with a project, a point, a specific point in time. Um, uh, one way of thinking about that specific point in time is that it has a duration of zero, right? So the start date and the finish date are the same, essentially. So if you want to uh, explicitly tell Project Libre that uh, this particular task called M1 is actually a milestone, all you have to do is define the start date of that milestone, right? and then indicate the duration as zero, right? So again, I'll take us to our, um, sorry about that, I'll take us to our, our spreadsheet here with the uh, task associated with our project, and you notice that M1 is associated with T1. What we are saying here is that if M1 is associated with T1, then it has to come on or after the, the end date of T1. So we we'll just go with the end date of T1, which is May 11th. So we'll go to M1 yeah, and specify the start date as 11th May. Enter. Once you specify the start date as 11th May, you go to the duration column. And then instead of one day, you just say zero and press enter. And then you notice that the moment you you explicitly state that your duration is zero. Project Libre knows to say that this is a milestone. So you notice this diamond black icon here or image with an associated date. Yeah. Save. You do the same for these other milestones. So M2 all the way through M8. So we go to M2. We go to M2. We see that M2 is associated with T4. End date for T4 is again May 11th. Yeah, so we're going to go to M2. M2 and say start date is May 11th. Enter, duration is zero. Control S to save. We go to M3. 
it's associated with T4 and T2, right? T4 and T2, but uh, actually, I think I already defined the dates, actually. I'm, I'm going around in circles, yeah. T2 and T4 for M3. Um, and so we are just going to say duration is zero because we're supposed to get the maximum between T2 and T4. Uh, so this and that, which is May 16th. So we expect the date associated with M3 to be May 16th. So we go to M3. Uh, yeah, it's, it wasn't done. This is supposed to be May 16th. We didn't do this. Press enter, and then the duration zero, right? We go to M4. M4 is T1 and T2. T1 and T2. So T1 and T2, yeah. And we get the maximum, which is 16th. So T4 is 16th May. We'll just go to 16th May. Sorry about that. Not the T4, but it's supposed to be M4. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm looking for M4 here. I'm lost. But, oh, there we go. It's here. So this is supposed to be May 16th. Enter, duration, zero. You notice again here, um, all these icons are changing. <coughs> uh, T5 is T3 and T6. So T3 and T6. Um, maximum date is May 26th. So we see that uh, uh, T5 here is associated with May 26th. So we go to M5. And my eyes... Uh, I should put on my glasses. My eyes are keeping me here. I'm struggling to find uh, uh, M5. I wonder if I defined it. There we go. M5 is associated with May 26th. Enter. Duration is zero. Control S to save. And then M6 is associated with T7 and T8. So T7 and T8. Maximum date is June, June 5th, right? So M6, June 5th. M6, June 5th. Duration is zero. Milestone pops up. Control S. We go to um, M7, which is T9. It's associated with T9, and T9 has an end date of June 10th. So we say this is June 10th. Again, the key thing here is just to make sure that uh, duration is zero, is just to make sure that um, you come up with uh, the correct tasks and activities and associated start dates and end dates or start dates and durations, right? It has to make sense. All right, M8 finally is associated with T11 and T10. So T11 and T10, they both uh, have an end date of June 20th. So M8 is June 20th. M8 is June 20th. Okay, duration is zero. Done. Okay, so now that we are done defining the milestones associated with the project, we can then specify the dependencies. Yeah. Um, again, notice that the critical path finder, once we, we are done with specifying the dates, goes to this task, right? which is it's associated with just task uh, T12. It's in red. I don't know if it's red or... Yeah, it is red. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, question is, how do you define the dependencies? Well, it's quite easy, really. All you, go, all you do is you go to this task list and then uh, identify um, dependencies that exist. The easiest way to, to do this is you start with the milestone dependencies. So, you can see that T1 is dependent... M M1 is dependent on T1. M3 is dependent on T2 and T4. Right, M4 is dependent on T1 and T2. So we can do this, and then we'll then define the dependencies between this, the tasks that exist. Right? So two ways in which you can define dependencies. You can either identify the task IDs and then just write the numbers alongside uh, or in, in this predecessor's column. Right? So observe, we're saying M1 is dependent on T1. So all we do is we come to M1 and specify to say, M1 is dependent on task with ID3. And then automatically, 
this dependency visualization appears, right? Not so hard. Again, observe. We go to this example where T4, M3 is dependent on T4 and um, on T4 and T2. Um, M3 is dependent on M, M3 is dependent on T2 and T4. M3 M3, M3, where are you? There we go. M3, and I wonder how you do this. Uh, I don't know if it's by commas. So 2, comma 4 maybe? No. Hmm. Okay. This is interesting. No, actually, it's not It's not both of these per se, right? It's not like M3 is dependent on T2 and T4, but um, it's dependent on the, the task with the maximum end date, right? So if you look at T2 and T4, T2 and T4, it will be T2, right? Uh, I don't know if this is making sense. But but it turns out anyway, the, the other method of defining, sorry about that, defining dependencies is you just drag and drop uh, tasks, right? Uh, drag and drop, drop tasks. So you drag the task um, the dragging begins from the task which um, is required for the next one, right? So if I want to indicate that M3 is dependent on T2, for instance, and T4, I would go to T2, which is here, and to M3, I would T2, and then drag it on M3, which is here, like so, right? Um, if I also want to, def to specify that uh, M3 is again dependent on, where is M3? M3 is de again dependent on T4. I'll go to T4 here, then drag it on M3, like so, observe. Drag it here, right? And it turns out that um, it's not using commas to define the dependencies, right, by typing in here, but you use a semicolon if you've noticed that, which is why I was a bit, um, I was a bit, uh, uh, distracted there when I was trying to showcase that. I'll just zoom in here so that it's much clearer, right? <clears throat> uh, control S to save. Um, again, uh, you come to this milestone, milestone 4, it's dependent on T1 and T2, right? Milestone 4. Milestone 4 is dependent on, there we go, it's dependent on T1 and T2. T1 has an ID of 3, T2 has an ID of 5. So it's 3, semicolon, 5, and then press enter, right? And then these are automatically indicated for you. Again, you get to choose. Either you manually type in the task IDs within this predecessors column, or you just drag and drop these different, um, these different tasks within the timeline. So to, to, to use the other method where you specify the task IDs, you type the task IDs in the predecessors column. If you want to use the method of dragging and dropping, you use the timeline, right? <clears throat> okay, uh, for M1 is T1, M1 is dependent on, okay, so M1 is again dependent on T1. It's, okay, this is the same thing. I'm wondering why it came out to be the same. It's a bit weird here. Oh, is this supposed to be T7? Let's go back here. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to check the recommended text here. It doesn't matter. <coughs> T4, M2 is dependent on T4. Yeah. M2 is dependent on T4. <coughs> so T4 is ID8. I'll just type in 8 here. Again, you see, the, there are drawbacks to these different met methods that I'm showcasing. Um, it might just turn out that you, you might type in the incorrect task IDs, right? Uh, so maybe you're better off just dragging and dropping using the timeline. Um, but, I mean, if you ca feel comfortable typing in the task IDs within this pre predecessor column, then um, then that's fine as well. I need to pick up it. All right, just have to pick up that call. Great. So the other thing that's remaining here, if you look at our tasks here, is um, uh, M2 has been defined here. Uh, M5 is dependent on T3 and T6. So we go to M5. Where is M5? M5 is here. Uh, we need to drag or specify IDs associated with T3 and T6. So I'll go to T3. 
which is here and I'll just say I'm going to drag it M5 which is here T6 I'm going to do the same T6 I'm going to drag it to M5 here drag and drop here uh, M6 T7 T8 M6 M6 is dependent on T7, T7 and T8, T7 and T8. <coughs> um, M, M7 is dependent on T9, M7 is dependent on T9. Boom. And then M8 is T11 and T10. T11 Oh, sorry, T10 and T11. All right, again, as you're dragging and dropping, if, um, if you find yourself wanting to squint to make sure that you're doing the right things, you want to make sure that you cross-check these automatically ge generated predecessors. So if you look at M8, we see it's dependent on 21 and 20 and 21. So you go to 20 and 21, which is correct. So M8 is dependent on 20 and 21. All right, so once you're done with the milestone dependencies, then you go to the task. So we just go uh, row by row, identifying tasks with dependencies. So you notice that uh, T3 is dependent on T1. So we go to T3. T3 is dependent on T1, and T1 is here. You just drag this to this task, yeah? Um, T5 is dependent on T2 and T4. T5 is dependent on T2 and T4, and I think in my case, this is the part where I just use the task ID. So T5 is dependent on T, T5 is dependent on T2 and T4. Sorry, T2, T4. So T2 is 5. And T4 is 8. Press Enter, Control Save. Um, T6 is T1 and T2. So I go to T6. T1 is 3. T2 is 5. Control S, and then T7 is dependent on T1, so you go to T7, ID is 3. T8 is dependent on T4, so I go to T8, T4 is 8. T9 is dependent on T3 and T6, so T9 is dependent on T3, T6. T3 is 7, T6 is 13. Enter. T10 is dependent on T7 and T8, so we'll go to T10, T7, T8. T7 is 15, hmm? T8 is 16. Enter. And then T11 is dependent on T9. T11 is dependent on T9. T9's ID is 18. Enter. Um, and then finally, uh, T12 is dependent on T10 and T11. So T10 is ID 20, semicolon. T11 is ID 21. Enter. All right. So that's it done. Would have uh, created our... Um, our um, <coughs> excuse me, our timeline, or gun chart, right? Very um, visually appealing. Uh, obviously, once you're done with this process, you'd want to go through um, through it to revise or review and make sure that you've done the correct things, right? Um, make sure that the critical paths make sense, right? Um, you probably find the zooming in and out feature very useful, right? You probably want to zoom in and zoom out so that you can. Uh, properly visualize these tasks here yeah, and you can easily drag it around all right uh, so once you're done with this obviously make sure you control save you can you can you can play around with the output in so many different things 
um, <clears throat> you can either you can either export this as PDF, right? So you go on file, and then before you export it, actually you can preview to see how it's going to look at, look like when you export it, right? Um, and then once you're comfortable with the preview, <coughs> excuse me, you can export it to PDF, right? So under preview, what you notice is that uh, you want to make sure that you adjust the visual representation so that the output that you're going to get is what you want, right? And specifically, I'm making reference to the default paper size. You want to avoid A4 because obviously exporting this doesn't make sense. What you'd probably want to do is to, to say maybe <coughs> uh, export this as... Uh, as maybe A1, A0 or something, but I would recommend one big page so that you see the entire the entire timeline, <coughs> or rather so that the entire timeline is exported for you to PDF. I'll close this preview here and just um, <coughs> again highlight that what for what you're working on, maybe you might want your timeline to be, to, to have, uh, let's say months on the bottom strip here and quarters on the top. And again, what you do is you go under task, you zoom out, right? Zoom out like so. You know, maybe quarter is a bit too much for this example here, but it depends anyway. I'll just say months with the corresponding uh, weeks here, right? This is much better. And then I'll just say save, I'll go to, to file, and then I'll say preview. And you notice that uh, the visual representation is much, much better than it was before, yeah? Much better. All right, so comfortable with this, I'll just say PDF, and then I'll just say save, right? Once I save it, um, I can go to my home directory and open it up and check to see if um, what I see in the PDF output is actually what I want. And then finally, you can integrate this, or you'll be able to integrate this within your proposal document. All right, so something else you might find useful as you um, are playing around with Project Libre is to see visual representation of what you've done here in form of the web breakdown structure, right? Notice here the web breakdown structure is um, pre presented in hierarchical structure, right? Um, you can also visualize the activity network, right? Um, right. Uh, as you're visual visualizing the activity network and the gun chart, you probably want to see if the things like um, what do you call this? The critical path that you see in the activity network correspond with, which they should actually, they correspond with the Gantt chart, right? All right, so I hope this was useful. Um, good luck, and remember that the deadline for the artifacts is uh, May 8th, which is Friday next week. Cheers, thank you.